Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening no matter where you are in the world. I've always wanted to say that, this is a Julian thing. Uh, for those with a sharp eye, I am not Julian with a haircut. Um, <laughs> my name is Dave Boyne. Uh, Julian couldn't be here today, actually he's in uh, South Africa doing some serverless stuff there. And normally actually they call Eric Johnson up uh, to take Julian's place, but he's in Seattle doing some serverless stuff there. Uh, so they called me up, uh, and I'm super excited today to actually be joined by Lars. Uh, Jacob said, do you want to say hello, Lars? Hello. It's great to hello. have you here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Um, I have a couple of things to go through, and uh, Lars is then going to kind of take the show, talking about all the cool serverless tools uh, he's been building. We're going to be diving deep and showing some demos and some slides from Lars. Uh, before I kind of get started, Lars, do you want to introduce yourself? What do you do? What brings you to serverless? Um, just yeah, general general intro. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm I'm Lars, obviously. Um, what brings me to serverless? Uh, I've been in technology my whole life. I got my first computer at twelve, and uh, started with QBasic and Turbo Pascal, and that way, and um, got fortunate enough to work at a company that has a strong tech culture. Culture, and in 2017, we were quite early seeing the benefits of um, serverless. So we were one of the first full-on production adopters of serverless, I would say. Uh, working a, for a company called Martem, we are the largest online grocery store in Sweden, similar to like Ocado in the UK. Um, yeah, got three kids, play table tennis and VR. Uh, yeah. Very cool, yeah. Nice. Uh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to just going to go quickly go through some of these slides and then head, uh, hand over. I'm going to just dive into these cool tools that Lars has been building. I'm a super geek myself when it comes to serverless tools or developer tools in general. Um, so I love when I see uh, what Lars is up to. Um, so first thing is first, let's dive, just dive into some of these. Uh, last week, we actually had Julian and Boris Tain talking about uh, baseline. Uh, which is uh, it's all about serverless observability. Uh, so kind of a startup doing doing some work in this space and fantastic work coming out of there. I always like seeing what Boris is up to and some cool, slick looking UIs and actually uh, solving some uh, uh, so, some good uh, problems around observability. So if you want to kind of look at that and dive into that, you can check out last, last week's stream here um, on our YouTube channel. Um, Today, we actually released, um, hot off the press, uh, Serverless in case you missed it, Q3. So we do this every quarter on the Serverless uh, DA team. So this is where we kind of summarize and recap the quarter, the releases, the highlights, blog posts, videos, you name it, it's on there. Uh, we do this to help people, um, well, in case they missed it, and you have a recap on everyone leaves leads like busy lives uh, and sometimes it can be hard to keep up with what's going on so if you're interested here's a qr code there you can dive deeper on the compute blog uh next week we're actually in nashville um i know lars you at the eda london one that we did last year right yeah i met you there that's yeah a great, great one i think that's the best conference i've been to apart from reinvent Wow, yeah. yeah, that's what that's awesome to hear. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. We had some great turnout in London last year. Um, great sessions, great conversations all around. So, I'm looking forward to next uh, next week. So, if you're in and around Nashville, I believe there might still be tickets available. Uh, so, come along to there to dive into Venture of an Architectures. Uh, I'm super excited about this one. I've never been to Nashville, so be interested to see what that's all about. I play guitar, uh, so I, I want to try and see some live music. So, hopefully, that will happen. Um, and a couple of slides here. So serverlessland.com uh, slash learn is a new page uh, I built this year, actually, to kind of try and collect some of these guides uh, and content around helping people uh, understand and dive deeper into serverless. So again, if you want to learn serverless, we have like uh, level 200 to 400 uh, kind of guides here. So I really recommend checking this out um, if you want to. And then equally, I found this busy slide from Julian. I kind of chucked it on there. It's a bit, it's a bit chaotic. Um, but we have patterns, workflows, snippets, and repos. And the reason why I would show you that is because service land, we have all these things and all these, all these uh things here actually um driven by the community. Everything's open source. So if you want to explore patterns, if you want to um download patterns or add patterns, uh, you can check out all the all this kind of cool content that we have. Um, and with that, I am done from my side. So I'm going to hand over to Lars. Now, Lars has been doing, as I said, 
some really, really cool stuff um, with uh, tooling around serverless. Um, every time we do a release at AWS, it's, it's, sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's a day or a week, but Lars is always there. Uh, integrating this stuff into his tools is incredible to see. I, I'm actually super excited to speak with Lars today around, around the tooling. So handing over to you, Lars. I know you've got some some like presentations and things you want to talk about, and then we'll dive into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, I think four hours is my record, but then I saw the <laughs> announcement two hours after, so it's really two hours. Uh, I, I'll, I'll get to that tool in a bit. Uh, so again, thanks for having me. Uh, I've I was contacted by Julian, I think two weeks ago, and I thought I had this presentation, which I did at a meetup in Malmö at the end of August. So I've been axing that a little bit to make it uh, fit into this format. Um, one part of it was accidentally deleted just before I started this, but I will uh, wing it and improvise. So it, it would be good anyway, I hope. Uh, yeah, just just don't fine. use RMRF if you want to restore <laughs> the thing on your file system. <laughs> Doesn't work. Yeah. So anyway, um, short about me again. Uh, that's the company I work for. And uh, if you live in Sweden, where you should buy your groceries, uh, I'm an AWS community builder since uh, I think I'm on, I'm on my fourth year now. It's a great place to be to share knowledge and uh, meet friends. Uh, also involved in the uh, user group Stockholm, uh, by arranged meetups uh, and stuff together with uh, Leskin. And I am quite active on Twitter or X uh, on that handle there. Uh, and I'm not the, the the only stuff I post really is updates to my tools. It's sort of my release log goes onto that with some uh, animations and uh, smileys. Uh, Right, so the agenda for this now, um, uh, I'm going to go through the background and motivation to why I ended up having uh, so many tools to maintain and what my plan is uh, going forward to uh, be able to manage that. Uh, I think one of the uh, features I use the most in the tools I build, uh, the, the way I reason I build this is I work at a serverless centric company uh, i see the challenges and the gaps in developer experience which uh, we have i then try and fix that and my first release is always announced to the community uh, and see what the reaction is from there and then i bring it back into work the uh, reason i do that is uh, the community is rarely wrong, and I think it's a good path to stay on to sort of move with community and maybe affect it sometimes as well. Uh, then I will demo my the tool which is becoming the sort of Swiss Army knife of my tools, uh, SAMP CLI. Uh, it's similar to uh, naming wise to SAM CLI, but the P I get to what that means, uh, not really sure. Uh, but it's a bridge between what I think is lacking develop experience. It's formally known as, as some pattern CLI. Uh, I've been heavily using uh, Dali 3, which I had access to, I think, yesterday uh, to do my slides. Uh, so uh, to go from the beginning to what triggered all of this, I haven't built tooling all my life. It was back in 2017. Uh, I've been working at Martin for 10 years now. Uh, at the end of 2016, we found it really hard to scale both uh, number of customers and also staff. And uh, it was a big, big old monolith. And we took the brave and I think very right decision to scrap it and rewrite it. And uh, it just happened to be that serverless was very hot. And uh, I, th I think Sam had just been announced back then. So we decided to rewrite everything and move on from on-prem to serverless and AWS. So it, we didn't do a lift and shift. We did a rewrite of everything. Mm. Uh, of course, if there's any colleagues listening, they will know that we do have some legacy, uh, <laughs> there, but most of it is serverless. Um, 
we very quickly found that there was no, not much tooling. This was before Sam Eli was, yeah, well, it was there, uh, but it wasn't very mature. There was, uh, yeah, there was a big gap in developer experience. So we sort of had to invent everything from the beginning for, for us to be productive. So we started building our own internal tools, uh, which were not designed to be open source at all. We started showing this off to other companies at conferences and stuff, and people wanted us to open source it, but we couldn't because it was so bespoke for us. Then this became a personal hobby of mine. I started building this on my spare time and trying to solve issues uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, it became not an obsession, but the way some people learn about AWS services, or whatever they're interested in, is some people write blog posts in detail about it as a learning thing. Some people get certified. I got some certifications as well. Uh, but the way I find it easy to learn about something like EventBridge or Step Functions is to write uh, tools around it. Uh, so it's of a personal benefit and the benefit of others. Yeah, I think just just to interrupt there, I think, I think that's a fantastic way to do it. I definitely resonate with that. I've done, done similar stuff in the past, but as you say, Lars, it's a great way to actually dive deeper into the services, right? Actually kind of write write the tools for it, and actually find, find the gaps in, in terms of uh, what's interesting, what you can do. Uh, it's fascinating, actually, what you can actually do with some of the API calls and SDKs into into uh into these tooling into these tools yeah. right you you've, you've done similar things with uh, event bridge uh, catalog and uh atlas or yeah yeah you got your projects around as well so I was, i've been following you for for a number of years so i feel like our paths have uh, crossed but you yeah. into the, you have the eye for making things uh, look good on uh, on a web page whereas i don't have that eye but i like the simplistic of a cli yeah um, yeah, so it's a fun way to learn ins in and outs of, of the tool's subject matter. So if you write a tool about X-Ray, you learn a lot about X-Ray, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's a natural path into the tech community because you want feedback. So you put it out there and uh, you get in touch with people who have similar thoughts, build similar, similar stuff, and you share experiences. Uh, I've always had this. Uh, if I spend a longer period of time without having a chance to be creative. Uh, it's uh, it's not good. I get tired. So and, uh, I think a lot of people in development feel the same, that you need to do creative stuff, not just work uh, on uh, uh, like a robot. And also when you build it uh, out in open, even if you do it closed source, you do it on your terms, uh, you're in charge. And uh, I think that's a nice thing to have as well. Right. So these ones I'm quite pleased with. Uh, this is power of DALI 3. DALI 2, if you <laughs> ask to insert text into a picture, it looks like uh, uh, someone with a serious <laughs> illness just trying to write something. But uh, it actually gets the text in there. Uh, so uh, these are some of the tools uh, that's popped up over the years. Uh, CFN diagram is on there because that's the one people seem to like the most. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> 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 I worked myself into a corner there because it's dependent, heavily dependent on uh, MX graph, which is what Drawlet.io used to use, I think. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm stuck on an old version. I would like to do a bottom-up rebuild of that one. Uh, no, that's uh, now you're showing the wrong one. That's SFNCLI. Oh, right. Yeah, CFNCLI. CFNCLI. CFN I, I don't let's, think let's, you have to let's, think with you. Let's keep ah, that one up. Never anyway. mind. We get that later. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's quite good to visualize simple CloudFormation or SAM templates. Uh, if uh, I think it does CDK as well. Uh, in like, Draw.io or in ASCII art, even if it's a small application. Uh, the EVB CLI, oh, I actually got the text on here as well. Um, the EVB CLI, uh, oh, there you go. Let's see if I'm <laughs> uh, The EVB CLI is uh, uh, when 
event bridge was released in 2019. It took us a couple of months to get on it. Uh, I found the uh, learning curve of writing the patterns the hardest uh, and connect them to targets. So from, it was a bit of a cognitive overload to go from SNS SQS, which we use a lot for event driven uh, stuff before, to work with EventBridge and the richness of the event patterns, but also the complexity and the time it took when you had a typo and one, you, you deployed it and it came back to you uh, as an error. So I built the uh, EVBCLI to help with the pattern composition and generation. Then it grew to also include local debugging where you can route mm -hmm. events triggered in the cloud to your local machine and, lo and look at them as they happen. Uh, then uh, you mentioned before this, uh, that um, uh, when I'm being quite quick with uh, releasing stuff out of the stuff you do, mm -hmm. uh, you would know when you released the serverlessland.com pattern mm -hmm. collection. Uh, when I saw that, I thought, oh, that's cool. But I think it's a little bit flawed uh, because mm -hmm. you it's great in the way you can, you can find patterns. But when then you see a pattern, you try to select just a part of it and copy it. When you click on that code window, there, you just get everything on the clipboard. Yeah, uh, sure. So I was a bit annoyed with that. And I looked mm -hmm. at the GitHub repo behind it. And I thought, OK, I can interface this one and let the mm -hmm. user pull out patterns from your patterns and merge mm -hmm. into their application. And that's what, where it started. And then it sort of started growing into a lot more yeah. <laughs> uh, full on serverless Swiss Army knife. Uh, SAM policy CLI, that's a simple one. Uh, that's a tool which helps people compose least privileged IAM policies, uh, because that's mm -hmm. another thing which takes a lot of de developer time when you um, deploy something and there's something wrong in the IAM policy. It's hard to mm -hmm. debug. And it takes round trips of redeployments to find what's actually going on. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't use that one. I'm still still maintaining that one, but I get to the last three ones here mm -hmm. are integrated in a, uh, in a new tool. Um, so uh, the extra CLI, that's a way to quickly analyze X-ray traces in your terminal window using SQART. Um, and SFN CLI is productivity around step functions mm -hmm. uh, development. So it you can set up local sync so you can write your ASL mm -hmm. and have it reflect in the cloud in uh, in half a second. Uh, yeah. It lets you initiate the scaffold new state machines in your SAM template. Is this is this the one I remember watching you do a Chrome extension, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the Chrome extension, that's a, that's a uh, memory. <laughs> no, uh, so what happened with Chrome extension was um, <laughs> Uh, you should never build open source tooling, which is heavily relying on a DOM, which you don't own. Obviously, the version of the workflow. So the, the one you're talking about is if you work, mm -hmm. if you use Workflow Studio in uh, step functions, it's this nice, lovely graphical interface where you drag and drop states in your state machine. Then Application Compose was released last year at reInvent. And I thought, oh, okay, we want the same uh, thing because Application Compose set up this real-time sync mm -hmm. from that diagram drawing tool to the lo local file system. Yeah. So I built a Chrome extension that, that does the same thing from yeah. Step Functions. The uh, thing is, uh, the Step Functions team is lovely. They're one of my favorite teams. They warned me that they were going to make changes. <laughs> they even gave me some preview access. <laughs> uh, I... I've been busy with normal work this autumn, so I haven't had time to fix it. Yeah, it's, okay. uh, I might so it's, it. Has it, bro has it broken now because the DOM changes then? Is yeah, that, yeah. Okay. I think uh, there should be a code freeze on on, on stuff I built Chrome extension. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so this this real time sync I'm talking about here. That's the other way around. So that's uh, you oh. can write your ASL in a YAML or JSON file yeah. on your machine, and whenever you hit save, it will reflect in the cloud. So I remember. Yeah, I it's remember seeing you this. Yeah. Uh, hey, Daniel, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, cool, nice, nice few projects. Maybe share them on the chat. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but I remember seeing the App Composer stuff last year uh, before reInvent, and I was thinking to myself, how are they syncing the browser DOM into my file system? They're using this file system API, and that's exactly what you're using, right? With the yeah, Stephon I didn't know file. that was the thing. 
Yeah, yeah. Nor did, nor did I, but I, I thought it was awesome. But then I saw your tour and I was like, wow, he's doing exactly the same. The file system yeah. API, syncing the, syncing the browser with the files, and it's fascinating yeah. what you can do there. Because your tool is really cool, being able to drag these things on yeah. into the Workflow Studio and actually having this represent into VS Code directly, yeah. Um, yeah. which is magical, yeah. I hope that there will be a native function like that. I, I think I reached out to Ryan Coleman on the App Composer team and I was like, how do mm-hmm. you do it? And he sent me yeah. the documentation like, oh, yeah. it wasn't that hard. <laughs> yeah. I think I think there's loads of tools, to be honest. I think there's loads of tools um, there with that API. You know, I think that opens the door to a lot of interesting kind of patterns there for sure. Yeah. Uh, so what we talked briefly before the live stream, you asked me, where are we going? Uh, where am I going? So if you go on that, I can show you the have this uh, last dot tools, this one. Uh, this is grabbing all my projects from my GitHub and uh, list them here. It's about, what is it? 16, 18 tools. It's a lot to maintain. Not of all, all of these ones are very maintained at the moment, uh, but the ones that people actually use and that I use uh, will, um, in mo- if it's CLI, that will, the, the goal is to merge them into a more of a like, general Swiss army tool. Um, so um, can I have to go through this again. Uh, and the reason for that is this one, that this Sam Patton CLI, it evolved so much that the name didn't make any sense anymore. Also, it was quite long to type. Um, so I was thinking for a long time about this and uh, I finally did it. And boom, I shorten it to SAMP CLI. And uh, that makes it more abstract. The P is still for patterns. It's just to keep the name reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, I checked with the SAMP team before if it was OK to be that closer name, and it was fine. Uh, what this does, uh, it does everything that SAMP pattern CLI did. It's just a rename. Uh, mm-hmm. I've so far pulled the th- three on the right on this of this the IAM policies and the X-ray CLI and the SFM CLI into that. They exist as standalone CLIs still. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to find a way to see, uh, to monitor if people actually use them. Otherwise, I might just move them into SAMP CLI as they are. Uh, but if I make a change, I make a change then and think of them as a lib which I reference and put in. So now. The SAM CLI is quite big, and uh, I think moving forward, these two might belong in here as well. The wow. EVB CLI is difficult because there's so many subcommands under it. Yeah. The SFN CLI was easy because I only had two subcommands. Right. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, Got to figure out the structure. Yeah. So it's kind of one 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 CLI to rule them all. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, at least uh, at, as long as they solve as long as the end user is yeah. someone who works that is someone like me and my colleagues who work on service mm-hmm. tech yeah uh, and also it has a strong naming reference to sam mm-hmm. it also supports cdk in some cases mm-hmm. i get to that in a bit yeah uh, so now it does all of this uh, cool. i got a bigger zoom of that yeah uh, so we use this uh from the idea phase, uh, when you want to create a new project, the mm-hmm. SAM CLI has SAM in it, where which takes you through a, like a GUI, or not yeah. GUI, but using uh, prompts to take you to the project you want, and you get some scaffolded example lambda functions and, and things. Uh, this has an init command as well, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, takes offers you the same templates. Yeah, it's a that's... cookie cutter thing, uh, yeah. but uh, you can also link your own repos to it with your own cookie cutter template. So we yeah. have the private ones at nice. Martin, which uh, sets up tagging and stuff the way we want it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I was, I was looking at this today, so I was playing around with this, and I was kind of looking. I looked into your code and how you're implementing it. Um, and yeah, I saw this. I saw the, the ability to switch out the repos. I thought it was an awesome touch because it allows yeah. us to, as you said, create anyone can create the repos with the projects that they want, the templates they want for their mm-hmm. teams. 
be able to kind of swap this URL out with that one, and then we can you can create these structures, create these sample projects using this tool, which I think is fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah. And once you've done that, uh, you have a you have an empty project uh, which you then want to fill with serverless patterns. So one application or one what's it called CloudFormation stack, some mm -hmm. stack consists of one or more serverless patterns. That's that's how, how they built it up. That, that's the way I see it at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so once you sit there after you initiate your 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 template, and I think the flow with the ones that comes with SAM CLI is that there are there's stuff in there. The first mm -hmm. thing you do is start removing things to add your stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this one works from a completely empty template and then you just pull in the stuff you want in it. Yeah. Uh, and then from there you start deploying with the SAM uh, tool, the official one, and then you iterate over your code. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm going to show in a bit is um, uh, the local. I was at the uh, we hosted a meetup at Martem in uh, back in May or June, and I was listening to Sebastian Bille, uh, uh, who's also coming into Bille, and he did a great presentation on SST. Mm -hmm. I knew yeah. about SSD and lots of people raving yeah. about it, and I was like, "Wow, I'm so jealous!" I <laughs> live local debugging feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to get get that, it's not like he's, we sit there with a few hundred CloudFormation stacks. It's not a matter of just swapping IAC yeah. tool. Uh, yeah. So I thought I need to think of how to do it and. Uh, I think the approach in SAMP CLI is slightly different. Um, mm -hmm. I get to that in a bit as well. Uh, uh, but yeah, the this the speed you get developing things yeah. with being able to trigger events in the cloud and see them reflect on your machine. It's like making yeah. your machine into some edge computer. Yeah, like yeah. That, almost. Yeah. I, I remember, I remember, I remember seeing this. I remember you tweeting about this actually, and then I remember SST uh, folks reaching out too because they're exploring similar stuff. But I, I, was, I was similar to you. I was very curious. I was diving deep. How is ev how is everyone doing this? And like the IoT core solutions and Lambda stuff, and it's, yeah, fascinating. Um, yeah, I was, I was watching the demos and stuff, and ho hopefully we'll see it today. But this is this 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 for me is yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's uh, basically. I think with with native AWS services, there's two two ways of doing it. It's API Gateway web sockets mm -hmm. or it's uh, IoT Core. Mm -hmm. uh, API ga Gateway web sockets require you to deploy mm -hmm. a bunch of infra. That's how I did it in EVB CLI because I didn't know better back then. Yeah, uh, but they have a backend stack which I need to maintain as well. Yeah. Uh, with this one, it's there's no infra to be deployed. Mm -hmm. Create some certificates and that's it. Right. Gotcha. Uh, and then what? Subscribe to the topics. Through IoT Core, or uh, I guess you'll, you'll show us. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, I will show, I will show yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's topics cool. back and forth. Uh, yeah, might be better way based on doing it. Uh, so yeah, so that's the flow really. And then we have some. If if you had a lambda function, you can run the policy command, which takes your wizard to create the least privilege uh, IAM permissions based on the resources in your template. So it will inject your stuff. I can show that in a bit as well. I think. Uh, and uh, another useful one is console, which is a shortcut to the resource page in the AWS console. So you don't have to log in and click, and especially if you like mm -hmm. have thousands of Lambda functions. The sure. console is not built for that. You want to have deep linking straight into the function. And that right. So console, console command lets me type it in, find the function, and then instantly load up that page in the console. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And I would also show the the invoke command, which lets you remote invoke Lambda functions and state machines. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, similar to SAM remote, yeah. I think. Uh, but it, it has a memory of what you've done before, so you can rerun like previous executions and things. I'll show that too, if we have to no. talk, too, talk too much. But that's the focus I would have later. Uh, so the options for running Lambda functions locally are not many. I used to do this. I used to wrap my functions in a test and then mm -hmm. keep track of my event sources in JSON files. And yeah, mm -hmm. you can use SAM local or local stack, or I think there's more stuff out there, but that's docu based. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it doesn't trigger by real cloud events. 
and both of the above used my local uses IAM permissions. What you really want to do, so I, I say nine out of ten bugs I put out are IAM bugs, or like maybe not bugs, but stuff that breaks yeah. too late. You want to catch them earlier. Um, you can use SSD as mentioned, but you might prefer something else. Uh, you might already be invested in that, or it might not be your choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a big Sam fan myself. Um, so, and also running Lambda functions is more than just running the code. Uh, mm -hmm. The code is one unit of it, but then uh, you have to look at applications as a whole. So there's integrations everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and they need uh, permissions. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they yeah, might get more and more complex. Uh, and you might want to debug just one function. And let the rest mm -hmm. run in the cloud, mm -hmm. or two, or all of them. <laughs> so you asked me before how how this works, and I've yeah. this is from the blog post down the corner for the QR code. If uh, uh, so, like to cool. link to it. Um, it is an attempt to describe how it works. I, when I was developing this, I had some great help from some of the community builders and heroes. And uh, one here in particular, uh, I'm not going to name anyone, uh, was like, wow, what happened? What have you done to my... <laughs> I know, maybe I should describe better what's going on. Um, so this is what goes on when you uh, run this. Uh, oops. I was gonna... Oh, I put things in the wrong order. Uh, right here. Here we go. Cool. So when you run this for the first time ever on your machine, mm -hmm. The much you would check or do I have stored certificates? If not, it will create certificates and download and store locally. And the certificates is the way you authenticate to IoT Core. Um, then it would go through. I hear myself now, there's an echo. I'm not sure if it's you. Sorry, I'll uh, try and mute. Yeah, it's cool. It's better. Uh, then I will, it packages a. A lambda function, which I call a relay proxy, which uh, uh, is a function that takes any event and just passed on to an MQTT topic. Uh, for each new version of SAMP CLI, you get a new version of this because I might have put in a bug fix or something in that artifact. And then it will loop, loop through each function in your in the stack you target and replace the function code with this uh, relay proxy. Uh, and then it will connect to MQTT topic. And then the interface is complete. Mm. And we're ready for uh, requests. Then you can start invoking uh, API gateway, put stuff on the SQS queue, or whatever triggers your functions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we jump down to here. So any function will trigger this one. And the SAMP local tool on this side will connect to another topic, which is the callback topic. And the response of the function will go back to the topic. And the function in the cloud, in the previous slide, it was replaced uh, both the code artifact and the configuration. So it will push down the memory size to 128, because this will be a long running function. And we set the timeout to, by default, a minute, but you can increase that yeah. to up to 15 minutes. So you can see the breakpoint for that longer, uh, um, breakpoints for longer. Uh, so that's the changes to the function during the debug session or the function. Like you might not select all the functions in stack. It might just be one. Uh, and then it will communicate that back to the relay function, which will return the response back to whoever triggered it. And once we're done with this, uh, it will clean up and restore everything according to the latest CloudFormation deploy. And uh, if you did not follow that, then <laughs> <laughs> then good luck to you. Look for another job. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it's complicated. I know. Yeah. No, I think um, I was looking at this. Yeah, today. Uh, but from what I understand, yeah, I think um, to kind of bring it up a level. You have your lambda functions. You have, you have uh, as Lars was saying. From what I understand, Lars, correct me if I'm wrong. 
uh, but we have uh, Lambda functions. We have this, this ecosystem of stuff happening. Uh, we, we, we want to deploy in the cloud, but we also want to debug our Lambda functions locally. So what this does is replace the Lambda code. Is this right? In, inside of our function, some yeah. configurations around our, our Lambda function to be able to actually do local debugging. And then once once we, we're finished and we've done our debugging, we tear it down and actually rolls back to the previous yeah. uh, the artifact. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, have a look at in action. Yeah, just do it. So uh, as I said before, I had a great app to demo this on, which I accidentally removed two minutes before joining the stream. So now, but I have a backup. <laughs> it's not as fun, but it's 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 done by you, so it's good. <laughs> uh, and as I said before, I'm normally a SAM person. Uh, building CDK support for this has made me understand CDK a lot better. So it goes back to you learn what you build. Yeah, yeah very cool. Um, so this project I'm about to demo to you is um, uh, looks like this. It's a simple example of an EDA application. It's a function that writes something. I think it's just it's writing uh, random data about the person, just fake data, nothing Is else. Is there any chance you can zoom in a bit on Yeah, this? sorry, yeah. Cool, thanks. Thank you. More, less, there. And I think that should be, I think that might be okay. Let us know on the chat if you still can't see this or if you can't see this, so then we can zoom in some more. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. it, it just creates fake data, puts it on DynamoDB. Uh, this is me testing something. Uh, then go back to the diagram. It will uh, the the items will go on the DynamoDB stream. There will be a function who puts this onto EventBridge. I guess this was before EventBridge pipes. Uh, I think there's still use case of using a function here. And then uh, there's EventBridge rule which triggers a third function. Uh, so all that does is that, and then the user created does that. Uh, now you see I have some, some breakpoints in my code. Uh, so what we're we doing here? So I, I was playing with this earlier. So SAM local debug set the region. Does this configure VS Code? It does some VS Code uh, configuration, right? Since so a launch it's, file, is that right? Yeah, it does. Uh, the I should also mention that the CDK support for this. I have a branch where I'm doing a bit of a rewrite there is an issue there's an open uh, issue on github about if you use stack props so if you have it in your app ts you create stack a and you pass stuff from that into stack b if you reference like um in this particular example it's uh, someone who passed in a dino db table and that table has a function on it to grant permissions that's a that's a null reference exception on that uh, i'm doing a complete rewrite on how that works with CDK. So that's coming. For this application, it works fine. For SAM, it works fine. There's also, depending on how you structure your project, there could be issues. Uh, the way, at least older versions of the SAM CLI examples, they want to package JSON in each function folder. But anyone using ES mm -hmm. build knows that you don't need that because it would be tree shaked anyway. So it's easy to manage dependencies at the root level, and that's what this is built for. Uh, so it's okay. not really. Yeah. It will make an attempt to merge all package JSONs and uh, do some magic, but yeah, yeah, uh, this is not going to work. And if anyone wonders why this comes here, there's a check for the if you use the latest version. I have an undeployed version. That's why I'm. You, I get that warning. Uh, well, unreleased version. Uh, now this will ask me what stack I want to uh, debug. I'll pick uh, this one. And uh, and again, with the rewrite, you will not have to choose the construct. You will just have to uh, use this one. Uh, I think that's the one. And I will use default for now. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, okay. 
Say something, Dave. What I'm fixing. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, we're right. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching it all. I'm waiting. How in anticipation? But we got yeah. the demo gods here. You've I, I know. Today, haven't you? You've deleted all your code, all your examples, and now as you try and use my my code examples, it's not playing game. I guess. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll keep we'll keep looking. Um, Oops. There's blood on the screen. <laughs> so. Um, Yes, yeah, so if anyone's got any questions so far on anything we kind of spoke about or looking for, um, looking kind of to dive deeper into this stuff, I'm going to share Lars's GitHub GitHub page here um, so you can see this. So Lars on GitHub has got tons of projects on here. Uh, so if you want to have a look at any of these, uh, I'm pretty sure Lars, you're open to kind of contributions or issues. Oh, yeah. Uh, I imagine. Um, so if you actually have any ideas or any kind of comments, on this stuff um yeah feel free feel free to even comment here or comment uh on github um with, with some issues um as, as i mentioned here the stuff we're actually using right now is uh this cli tool uh some cli so again if you want to kind of have a look uh some great documentation i was looking today actually um you can check this out um out here um again you can kind of set up local debugging yourself um and various other things um <coughs> how's the demo going are we uh is it good no no not playing ball let's try this one instead let's do good. jump over yeah, to python okay, okay. Right. um so now I will hit F5. I'll tell you what, what we do. I, I, I take a step back and I show the initial uh, scaffolding uh, capabilities. Cool. Uh, and then we, we, we get to the live debug in, in a minute. So Let's if I that. go back into the demo folder and I go into demo service. <coughs> Cool. So we're gonna are you gonna use uh, one of the tools to, to in, uh, boot bootstrap a project, right? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Cool. Um, so to start with, uh, I will uh, actually jump out from here and I do. Uh, I will make this a bit bigger for this one. So to get, yeah, as Lars said earlier, he, he joined he joined the stream and had all these demos set up for him, and he RM RF the wrong <laughs> folder. And I was just watching him. You do this now, and I was like, do not RM RF another folder. I still keep my calm now. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I use Samp in it. Be cool. Okay, that's great. And uh, this will show uh, ask if we want to use a uh, official AWS ones uh, or the init templates, uh, for which we host Martin. I will use this one because there's okay. one init template in particular I like because it's uh, empty. Right. Uh, we are about 5050.net node, so you can drill down and then you fix uh, fetch this light one. So, so internal developers are using this tool to help them bootstrap new microservices, new projects. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, the team name, um, I call my team demo for now. And this team name will be, it will tag all resources. So we can use that for cost allocation and, and things like that. Cool. Uh, now I have uh, this cool. scaffolded here. Yeah. Um, and what I get is a bit much config maybe, but I get an empty. Uh, yeah. These. Uh, Transforms at the top here, that's stuff we use internally. Mm -hmm. uh, the account I'm going to deploy this to does not have those macros deployed, so I remove them. Yeah. Uh, I, really like, I really like that idea of being able to kind of point to the repos. I Previously, when I was work, working um, for kind of AWS employee working, working in this stuff, uh, scaffolding our own tools, doing this stuff ourselves, um, but I, I, I would have loved a tool like this just to be able to say, okay, here's our repo. And uh, please just scaffold a new service to our standards, yeah. right? To our, to our, as you as you mentioned, you know, our, our defaults, everything else like that. Um, and then it's and, and then it changes to the uh, the, t the template can go through the normal pull request cycle. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really like the way of working. Right. Um, now we want to add something. I'm going to add something simple uh, for the 15 minutes we have left. Uh, and for that, I use SAMP import. And this will give us a list of patterns, which are from the serverlessland.com collection. Mm -hmm. It's uh, from uh, some internal stuff we have as well. So I'm going to do an API gateway. Oh, it goes a bit weird because I'm zoomed up when you do the typing. I'll make this a bit bigger. There we go. Um, so I'm going to do an, uh, the typically go left to right. So it's API gateway to Lambda to Dynamo. Uh, like you see the source of them on the right, so it's patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to use a particular one we have in-house. Uh, that's the one. And uh, MH Labs is our open source uh, GitHub org. Mm -hmm. uh, I will use normal JS for this one, uh, and I will use memory size of yeah whatever. Uh, and what do I want to import? I might just want to get function, but I will pick all of them now. And I'm going to make some space now so we can see the action happening. Uh, uh, for on the imported code, yes. So if the, and there was no code available for that one, so there's nothing imported. And now it filled up my template with uh, with this stuff. Cool, very cool. Yeah. So okay. That's very cool. Now, I want to have what I typically do is I put my uh, I skip the code URI and put uh, uh, keep everything from the root and that is build tree shake. So I, I attempt to change that. Didn't used to work like that, but I do it now. Mm -hmm. um, so like that, and uh, we have the. Uh, So I'm right. To, I'm right to believe you use the CLI tool there to pick up and create your template YAML file, right? You're adding yeah. stuff dynamically to that using the tool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is an old one which which didn't have the build method for ES build, so I'm going to add that. Uh, now I'm just going to create this function. So it was get item and and uh, put item. So do you, do you ever scaffold your projects with the, fun the functions already there, or do you tend to kind of do this? I tend to add the function myself. Uh, okay. Because it's not always you, you want a function. You might yeah. just want. Uh, and you want to do some more. more to this one. Uh, What do you think? Deploy straight away? No problems. Live you coding? So? Did, did you, <laughs> you spot anything? No, uh, not, not that I've seen. But um, yeah, I have faith. Something has to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so while, that, while that's deploying, what's the next steps? So you're going to try and debug some of these. Uh, some of these functions putting some breakpoints in. I am indeed. Yeah. Cool. I have to put an output as well because I don't know what the API gateway URL would be. That's about right. Oh. Let's 
Yeah, it's hard live coding. It's hard hard live coding and letterbox editor. <laughs> um, so I, I feel I feel you here, uh, but you, you're doing a good job. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping this thing builds so we can see the, the yeah, the, the, we'll do. But cool. I know on the GitHub repo, you also you have a demo on there. Is that right? Like a little YouTube clips and things like that. If people want to check out um, any of this. Um, oh, here's a link here. In the chat. Uh, so if we've got any questions as we go, um, feel free to kind of reach out. Nothing's working. Or if you're, or if you're using any of the last tools, um, yeah, that would equally be cool. Uh, cool to know. Or if you're going to plan to do explore any of the tools or questions, uh, feel free to reach out there. Okay, we got the uh, the live live demo gods here. Uh, what are we wrong here? Okay. Um, that's a good question. Debugging here. Um, it's output. Never mind. I'll skip that one. Okay. Oh. Because I didn't do the same build. There we go. Cool. So when you so the flow is we set we set up the project and then we run the local. Can you explain what the local uh, command does? Um, so. Am I right to believe it sets up sets up VS Code? Uh, you select your editor. Can you select your different editors? Does it support different editors for the debugging? Uh, it does. Yeah, it supports uh, Rider. It supports the the IntelliJ suite. Okay. Uh, and yeah. VS Code, a full blown Visual Studio. Oh, uh, okay. And you select that when you do the lo do the setup. Is that right? Or exactly. No, it will. Uh, if if you do it in the integrated terminal, it will find which ID oh, you're yeah. using. Okay. Otherwise, you can pass it in as a as a parameter. Okay. Cool. Looks like it's deploying now, Dave. If this goes red, okay. now, I'm rage quit. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've got a couple. We've got a couple more minutes um, before we have to start wrapping yeah. up here. Um, yeah. So we will get a. I'm not going to hit the API gateway. I will show you yeah. the. Uh, so now I set up the. Ah. I have to do npm install first. Install the dependencies. Yeah. Yep. And then we can see this. Um, I really recommend, honestly, if you're watching this, uh, we had the demigods against us here, but oh, here we go. Um, I recommend if you're doing Lambda, if you're doing any debugging, I really recommend checking this out uh, because when I saw it and when I saw what's happening here, it's, it's magical. So it uh, sets up the launch config yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, there's a broken one here, which we don't need. Uh, and what you will do then is hit debug all functions mm -hmm. and hit play or hit F5. And now this whole flow of replacing the functions and stuff will start. Cool. This is what you spoke about earlier, right? About replacing the Lambda code yeah. uh, with the custom co custom code or using MQTT to pass pass on exactly. events, is it? Yep. So um, now it's ready for requests. Okay. So now I will take the opportunity to show the SAMP invoke command. Mm -hmm. And this does a remote invocation of the function in the cloud. Okay. And I will set a breakpoint here. It's already there. Yeah. And I will select the get item function. I will do some input JSON, which is come on 
<laughs> work. <laughs> like that. Uh, you can save this as a shared test event, which other uh, members in your team can use. Not can do it now. Very nice. Um, it. Let's see. There was an error up here when we built before. Utilis no default export. I'll tell you what, I'm going to remove all of these dev dependencies. And remove all of these. There we go. Cool. We're getting that over. New, new cool. install. Let's try it. I think it's the last attempt uh, for us to wrap up. But I, yeah, this is, this is no pressure on this one, but I think, um, as I said, if you're watching this, you kind of want to get have a look. I really recommend it. I'll paste, paste the link again here. Um, check out. So this is pretty cool, pretty cool stuff going on. Um, there are videos on the GitHub uh, link. If you follow Lars on Twitter, you can also see, see it all in action and see it working. I've seen it working. It's very, very impressive. Um, actually be debugging Lambda Lambda code as it kind of goes through your architecture, invoking stuff, as, as Lars was saying, invoking stuff in the cloud with your IAM policies already set up and actually debugging this in the code. And actually, you can actually see the events coming in, debug uh, is your normal debug flow, right? So you can see the payloads, uh, dive into the events, uh, probably do some conditional debugging. Um, so kind of fantastic, closing the, closing the gap really on that developer workflow, which is kind of, you know, we have these events uh, we have this workflow, and how, how can we dive deeper? Um, any any more luck here? Is it still got problems? Uh, still some <laughs> bloody retest problems. Uh, yeah, cool. I think I think it would be cool. Yeah, just um, maybe uh, maybe um, maybe we share. Um, is there is there any more kind of tools? I know you've got a you've got a. Um, a blog post here about how you can get started in more details. So I'll share that in the comments. Um, we are running out of time, so we might have to leave it there, Lars. Um, the demo guides weren't good to us, but um, let me switch back. Are you, are you okay to leave it there? Yeah, so we just tried one more time. Cool. Uh, no. No, it's red up there. Yeah, no, that's fine. It, it, yeah. It, it does work in a normal day. <laughs> yeah, on a normal day. You're not demoing live yeah, on, on Twitch and LinkedIn and uh, and uh, the socials. But I just want to say thanks very much for coming. I think I think the tools you're doing are really cool. Uh, I, I'm very interested. I think it's very cool that you're doing community first and then kind of bring them in internally and get that feedback loop going. Um, I just want to say, yeah, thanks, thanks very much um, for coming. If people want to kind of... Uh, help help out or, or or contribute or got questions where where can they find you Lars? Uh, what's the they, best to do that? the best bet is on uh, uh, Twitter mm -hmm. uh, or LinkedIn. I think you linked to both. Yeah, go cool. here, here's Lars on Twitter here. So yeah, if you've got any questions, uh, reach out there. If you want to kind of want to try out or you get stuck, I'm sure Lars will be a, be able to kind of just message, be able to help out there. Um, but I just want to say, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to kind of wrap up here. So uh, tune, in, tune in next week. I'm pretty sure Julian will be back then uh, talking about other serverless stuff. Thanks very much for tuning in to this one. If you're watching on repeat, thanks for watching. And yeah, I uh, just want to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, Lars, any final words before we go? Uh, no, not really. Thanks for having me. And uh, sorry, it didn't work. No, it's fine. Yeah, these these things happen. But um, I, I've, seen, I've seen it in that <laughs> Uh, it is, it is, it is. No, awesome. it's fine. Nice. I highly recommend people uh, check this out. And I'm sure Lars will be back in the future with some more tools. And uh, to be honest, I'd love to get you back in the future, uh, right. looking at some of your other tools, see how this progresses uh, and things like that. If you'll come back, so that'd be really cool. I hope there was some uh, content before this live demo. That was uh, that was good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. So, th yeah, thank you very much. Uh, feel free to reach out and see you next time. Goodbye. I'll see you in Vegas. Bye. Oh, yeah. We'll see you in Vegas too. Yeah.